Okay, back with TV Survival Cabin. Um, just thought I'd add to a little bit of the, on the other video what I was talking about on alternative fuels and travel. I'm looking into electric engines and electrical power for uh, two things. But one, one for my for my car travel or my truck to put in my truck uh, to run a total electric car, except that it'll have a generator on board. So I won't have to stop and get nobody to charge me up. I can just plug it in with a power converter. If it's an AC motor, if it's a DC motor, I can just plug it straight straight into the uh, generator. No, it'd have to have a converter if I go to a DC. But your DC, if, if you get, stay with a DC motor, the pluses are, with a DC, you can run all your appliances off the DC current. If I go to an AC motor, I, then I gotta change over with a power converter to run it from AC to DC again in order to run my appliance, my, uh, your, um, oh, what do you call it? Accessories, they call it. So that's for your radios, your heat and air, your windshield wipers, things of that nature I'm talking about. Yeah, it's about to get browned up here. It's starting to brown. Took long enough to get this little electric, uh, a hot plate hot enough to cook. I've got it red up on hot and the skillet's cast, so it's probably a quarter inch thick uh, cast iron skillet. But anyway, uh, back to the th discussion of uh, alternative travel and alternative uh, fuels for running the home. I've thought about possibly setting up a uh, steam engine generator for backup power from the house and if I was near where I had plenty of water, I'd put in a windmill or hydro plane, a hydro type uh, turbine to run water through it and use the water to turn your generator to produce your electric for your home. And it will work. I've seen a lot of it done uh, up in the northern country as well as uh, on the internet up in Alaska. They got some of them. It's just, you remember seeing the old uh, windmill, the old grain mill wheels that they used to run water from a warehouse down on, which turns about seven to 10 miles an hour. And that's all you need to turn the generator. If it'll turn and grain, uh, run a saw mill, a saw to, to split, uh, to cut out lumber, it will, or cut, and cut wood, it'll also, would probably more than be enough power to run a, a generator to run your home. Of course, of course you've got to have a large enough of generator to run your home off of that way. And that, that would be your main source, but then you could have a, another alternative fuel source, which would be coal and wood to run a uh, steam engine generator to run your home in the, as backup. Unless you live where you get a lot of wind, where you got a lot of air, where you can run a a uh, wind, wind charger, and those are pretty good, been, been good to work, but generally uh, they don't produce enough wind. What happens is when the wind is not blowing, then there you are back to some other source of power to run your home on. That's what I'm talking about on the home. Now, now we go back to the automobiles. I just wonder how it would be if a man could put a steam engine, a smaller con uh, version of it, with a boiler on it and with your with your wood box just like you got on a train and mounting that sucker right to the front of an old bus or an old UPS bus or something like that or a truck of some kind and just uh, mounting it in there in an old truck and uh, on the front of it it, so it, it wouldn't want it as heavy as their car as a train but something in a smaller version of that to where you'd have maybe 600 horsepower, that'd be plenty. I mean, or even 350 horsepower would be good enough. But 600 horsepower would be bad, you know. That sucker'd run. They have power to pull, pull a mountain down with it. Then uh, what you would do, you probably wouldn't even need four-wheel drive on that type of scenario, a type of vehicle. But you, before I would do something like that, I'd have to price and see what DOT would allow to be put on the road in that case. Because you, when you're using a steam engine, you're going to have exhaust coming out into the air and what the EPA would, might gripe about if you did have it. And I know it would work, 
but it's just you got to have a it'd probably be more like uh, front wheel drive more than likely because you know the the trouble is with the steam engines they're on the side the the ro the rollers to the pistons as the piston goes up and down the train sides on each side the uh, rails to the wheels would move back and forth like this. Well, the same thing principle would be going on with your truck or car. Uh, you'd have to have it hooked up to a set of wheels on the front. But here's your problem: you got to have a way to guide it. You either got to put it on the back end of your vehicle and let it push your vehicle, or you got to put it on the front because of the way it's designed uh, to see how that would work. But it's just some ideas that I have of, of alternative travel. And the only reason I've even got interested in this in, in the last five to six years is because of gas prices being the way they are, and fuel prices, diesel, out of sight. Man, that stuff's too much. Everything we look at, or everything we need, just ordinary needs, gets ridiculous on the price. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous what you have to pay for stuff now. And if you could get it, if you had your, like I say, if you had your home fully self-reliant and self-sufficient, self you wouldn't have to worry about paying electric, paying for gas. That would free up some money right there for you to buy some insurance for your family, cover your, for medical insurance for your family. If you can find an insurance that ain't so crooked, that it won't pay off in the end anyway, some of it. But finding a good one's tough. A, a full, of course, a full, a full coverage insurance you'll never find. But it should be if they're going to sell it like that, as high as it is. Just my thought on it. Let me get this over here. So I'm going to get small hamburger done, and then I can fix my chili. I'm trying to keep my meat from burning there on my on that small stuff. Boy, the brown is pretty good there. And meat out there. Got a bigger skillet than what I actually needed, but still. Be alright. I'm just making enough chili for me, and there ain't nobody for me and Ma. Ma don't eat, don't want the chili. It messes her stomach up. So I'm making her a hamburger, and, uh, cause that's what she's really had. It's a sandwich, that's all she ever eats. I can't get her to eat anything good. But that's another, that's another subject. Anyway, uh, I've got to do some more studying on that and see what it costs versus electric or using uh, steam engines between the two uh, or the only other two things I can think of that would run a vehicle efficiently and have power. And I know that steam engine will flat pull. If it'll pull that train cars out there, you know, back in the early days, early American days, we had steam engines. The reason they went away from them because they was consuming too much of our woodlands. They were having to, having to uh, keep, use a lot of good hardwood uh, oak and stuff to run them trains until they got coal. Then they were using coal and wood both to run them. And they found that diesel was cheaper, so they went to diesel uh, generators. Those are diesel generators, and they get 421 miles per gallon out of them, pulling all them cars on that track. And they got a, what you call electric hub motors. They don't have motor. They don't have a motor up in the, inside the vehicle like a car. No, it sets on the hubs down below. Uh, from what I've seen of them, and they uh, the, the electric from the generator is what's powering it. And they get 421 miles per gallon on the, on diesel. So if their diesel is costing them four or five dollars a gallon, which I doubt it is for them, because but I don't know. But I'm just saying, saying generally the government backs the railroad, you know, and they probably ain't going to be paying what you and I are paying. But not at all. I doubt it. If, I mean, in public eye, yeah, it's going to show that way, but I bet you they don't. Anyhow, uh, those, that's just some thoughts on alternative travel. And I'm going to, when I start, it, when and if I decide to build one or the other of them type of things or find something else to use, whatever I decide on when I do it, I'll have y'all with me and you can watch me build it from the scratch from the ground up. 
when and if I ever do it. I'm just saying I've got to do some more studying and find.